everyone welcome back to my channel i'm kayla and it's time to crack into a good book so it's time for another weekly update and you know best uh, settle in here because it's gonna be a longer one because i have 11 books to talk to you about that i've finished since last week so it's kind of like a big push to the finish to you know complete my battle of the books bracket which if you want to see what the results were i posted a short the other day so i will try to remember to link that in the description so you can see who won i was you know, spoiler alert, I was correct in choosing Blood Air. But there's actually a lot of really great books here, and I'm excited to talk to you about them. So I guess before we get started, leave an astronaut emoji in the comments to let me know that you're here. So like always, we'll begin from the lowest and work our way up to the highest rated. So we'll start with some a three-star book, and that's Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. So this is going to be incredibly hard to review without spoiling anything, like even just like really vague stuff I think is enough or was enough for me to kind of ruin the experience. So I'm just going to say now if you do intend on reading this book like I highly suggest just skipping ahead to the next book. But anyway we will go ahead and get into it. Like I said this is a three star book and this is an adult thriller where Louise, one of our main characters, kisses a man at the bar. Turns out it's her married boss. So she ends up meeting his wife who seems to be scared of David, this, this man, and it's kind of like, what's going on with their marriage? So again, this is going to be really hard to review without spoilers. I'm going to keep this vague, but still. This started off pretty exciting and it was easy to get into, but I did start to get like really impatient in the middle and just kind of, I don't know, it was just started to be like a, a struggle to really get through this. The pacing was okay overall and, you know, I think it started off with this interesting mystery of like what's going on with this couple. But then I definitely figured out what was going on once certain aspects start to be introduced and I'm like a little bit frustrated and bummed that I was able to mostly guess this. Like there is something that's mildly surprising but I figured it out right before the reveal so I was like well all right. I didn't read anything any reviews in a lot of detail but I think just even the vaguest things are, like mostly because it, it's a very hit or miss book and a lot of people talk about like what is this ending? So like I kind of went into it knowing that there was something big that happens and I think that kind of put me on my guard a bit and then I was like able to really easily guess it and I was like oh shit that was it okay so I feel just like really let down honestly. We do have some like messed up dynamics with this this couple and just with Louise kind of getting involved with both of them. I do feel bad for Louise but I think she does make some you know not so great choices. I did like alternating perspectives between Adele, who is this wife, and Louise because I think it does develop the situation a bit more, but I didn't particularly care for any of the characters. Like I started off liking Louise, like she was pretty funny and everything, but then I think I just kind of lost interest in her as the book progressed. I am, again, just like really mad about these reviews. Even though they are vague, I just wish I hadn't read them because it just like built it up too much in my mind. I'm bummed that I didn't like this more. I am actually currently watching the show. We just watched the first episode last night, so I'm hoping to kind of get through that and I'm, I'm making Ivy watch it with me. So I'm hoping to do like a book versus TV show comparison video and get Ivy's perspective on things like because he has not read this book. And so I'm, I'm curious to see if his experience with the show will go better than mine for the book. So that'll, you'll have that to look forward to. So the next three star book I'll talk about is Girl One by Sarah Flannery Murphy. So this comes out June 1st and I did receive this for review from the publisher through NetGalley. And so this is an adult sci-fi thriller where we have these nine miracle babies who are conceived without male DNA and they're raised on this commune called the Homestead and basically what ends up happening is that it burns down. So then the remaining girls and mothers scatter across the country. So years later Girl One, who is Josie, is on this mission to find her mother who has just mysteriously disappeared and kind of uncover the truth behind their existence. So I really liked this premise. I think it had a lot of really interesting ideas with parthenogenesis and just like developing mysterious powers, you know, like it's pitched as like being a supernatural thriller. So I was like, okay, yeah, that sounds awesome. And I did really like these powers that we get to see. I think the general mysteries of, you know, like where has Josie's mother disappeared off to like what happened to her and just like what happened all those years ago at Homestead. The both of those were really interesting and enjoyable to follow. I think the writing as well was just like really easy to read and I was able to guess some things but not all so like I appreciated that. I do think we have like a bit of a found family of sorts with the girls because you know Josie ends up kind of going around the country to meet with these different girls and their mothers and they start to form these close bonds of sisterhood. 
I think it's really nice to see them kind of discover strength in each other and find out that they're like, you know, better together basically. We do have some lesbian characters as well, so it's nice to see that representation. In terms of Josie, I think she's a pretty solid main character. I like how dedicated she is to finding her mother, and you know, I think along the way she kind of deals with these situations that come up that end up being different than what she thinks they are. It's very satisfying to see her come to terms with, you know, under, like finally realizing, oh, okay, I just like completely misinterpreted the situation. And you know, I think the side characters that we get are pretty decent, though I will say I think some of, several of the girls and their mothers do kind of blend together. So, you know, unfortunately I did find myself getting bored at times with this, and I think there is a lot of repetitive traveling from one location to another to see these different girl and mother pairs. And like I said, I kind of just did just start to lose interest as the book progressed. It kind of took a bit longer than I was really anticipating for these supernatural aspects to come in. So I think for me, it would have been a stronger book had those been introduced earlier. I kind of expected it to be more prevalent throughout the book. Like we do get to see these powers and they are really awesome, but like I wanted even more of it, I think. And I also will say like, I don't love that the like kickstart, I think, to the powers for these girls kind of develop after being threatened by men. That's not really what I wanted to see. Like I would have preferred them to have like a different starting point, I guess. But while this wasn't a perfect book for me, I did still have a good time with it overall. So now we'll move to the three and a half star books. And the first one I'll talk about here is The Old Guard, book one, Opening Fire. And I think this is written by Greg Rucka? Ruka? This is obviously a graphic novel. And we have the premise here is that we have these soldiers who are cursed with immortality. And it's, you know, it's understandably hard to keep this a secret, especially in the modern world. So sometime last year, Netflix did a movie adaptation of this, and I think the broad strokes of this story are actually quite similar to the movie, so I'm kind of impressed with the movie adaptation, actually. I think this has less detail than the movie does, and kind of like on that note, I guess the movie seems to fill in a bit more, especially with the action scenes, though I do think we actually get to see the background of the characters a little bit more in the graphic novel and like it's hard for me to remember because I did watch that like over a year ago or something like that so I could be misremembering that. I think the movie though shows more of the internal conflicts of our characters so that was kind of nice. I continue to really like this premise though I think you know this was very quick to read. I particularly enjoy reading about their experiences over time and just kind of getting this more like historical aspect and you know seeing them pop up over history and just like what their experiences were. Like that is definitely the strongest point I think for me in this story. It's in terms of like the art style it's actually like super colorful and you know you'll see it's like each page has a different color scheme so there's a lot of like purples and oranges and, and teals I guess. <laughs> so that was quite nice. I liked that. I think the artwork itself in terms of the characters is a little bit blocky and I don't know if I necessarily love that but it's, it's all right. I think the cast of characters is just fabulous again and I really continue to love Joe and Nikki's relationship in particular. I think there's some pretty entertaining dialogue that we get here and yeah I mean I had a good time with this overall. I think and like obviously like I've been kind of comparing it with the movie. I think the movie actually did a really great job with it. I almost feel like I prefer the movie to the, the graphic novel but I'm not entirely sure. However you know I, I do really want to continue the story and you know like I think it kind of leaves off in the same place-ish as the movie so like I don't know I want to see what happens next so I'll, I'll definitely be picking up the next volume. So the other three and a half star book I'll talk about is Undercover Bromance by Alyssa K. Adams. This is the second book in the Bromance Book Club series. This is an adult romance and we follow Liv who is a sous chef and she catches the like celebrity chef owner harassing a waitress and so she confronts him and gets fired. She ends up teaming up with Brayden Mack even though she doesn't really trust his motives and you know he ends up calling in the Bromance Book Club as reinforcements. So I will say like I miss the involvement of the book club in this like obviously it's still present and we do get to see the book club members but I think they aren't really reading and discussing a book as much here as they did in book one and I kind of miss that like framing device because I think it was really interesting in book one from what I remember of it like you know they would be reading it and the main character would be like okay I see like what I could do in my own relationship and you know they kind of mention that they're reading like a romantic suspense novel here but it's not really like as present as I would have liked. 
I did really like this general premise of stopping sexual harassment and abuse, though. I, it's definitely a difficult topic. I also liked seeing Mac and the other, like, romance book club members kind of taking a stand against this as well. I think the book is really easy to read, but my main complaint with this is actually Liv, the main female character. So I guess getting into the characters, we'll talk about Mac first. I think he is good at pushing his friends to read romance books to kind of like help their marriages but what's interesting is like i think he can't really see how to deal with his own situation as much and so that was nice to see him sort of come to terms i think with his own behaviors and i don't know take charge of his own situation a bit more i did guess what was going on with him but it was still interesting to find this out Liv, on the other hand i think was a complete jerk when she finds this particular information out. He has really understandable for reasons for like behind keeping this from her and other people and she kind of like makes it all about her which I really didn't like. Generally she's not my favorite female lead, you know, I think she does push people away and she does have a bit of an attitude and like I, I get it, like this is understandable because of her past but I think this was just a bit much in terms of this situation where she's like trying to protect this waitress like I think she's not very understanding of the victim's position you know in terms of like what they feel comfortable with and I think she's really judgmental about that and it just kind of made me uncomfortable to read she has good intentions but I think she just pushes a bit much and doesn't think about what she says and how that could affect these other women I did like the side characters though particularly the Russian who was part of this bromance book club He's a hockey player, and I think book four gets his perspective, so I'm excited for that. We also have Liv's landlady, who is really great, and I think both of these characters in particular pro provided some fantastic comic relief and support. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think I liked this as much as the first book, but it's still, like, a really fun premise for a book series, and I do think I would be interested in continuing it. So I think now we're going to skip all the way up to four and a half star books, so we've got a lot of really great books here. But the first four and a half star book I'll talk about is The Last Odyssey by James Rollins. So this is like an adult action adventure type book, and I think this is like the, I don't even know, this is some number book in the Sigma Force series. And basically here in Greenland, researchers discovered this map and astrolabe that follows Odysseus's path from Troy, but it kind of ends up detouring to Tartarus, where weapons are supposedly hidden. So I really loved that this was inspired by the Odyssey, you know, like I love mythology, and I think it did a really great job of incorporating these Greek myth mythological elements in here. I think it does some really awesome stuff with this. It's always super cool just in general with the series and his other books like to see how he builds from history and science and kind of like you know makes an exciting story like there are real life like inspirations behind these things and like sometimes it goes into a little bit unbelievable stuff but it's always such a great adventure and I really enjoy it. I think this is well paced overall though I think my main complaint and this is why I think it's not a five star book for me was that I did like weirdly struggle to get into it and like at times I would just find myself bored and I'm like why am I bored there's so much going on here I, so that was very strange I think but yeah we, ha we do have some exciting action scenes here and some fun research there's also I think some darker things here like torture and fanatical cult members. It's super fun. They do a lot of traveling around the world and there's like automatons that come up so I really liked those elements. The ending was definitely very exciting. I think it also just has a powerful message of hope where you know you have individuals standing up for what's right and trying to make a difference and this was like I think he had mentioned this I think in the author's note where it's like even though the world can seem pretty bleak at times, it's important to try to change things and just like do what you can because like standing idly by and just being like, okay, well, there's nothing I can do. Like that doesn't really help the situation. So I, I, I don't know, I just thought this was a nice message. I continue to really love this team here. Everybody has their own individual strengths. Kowalski, I think, is more prominent in this one. And, you know, even though he kind of comes across as this dumb jock, He's very protective and, you know, willing to do whatever it takes to keep his people safe. So I liked seeing him a bit more and just like, you know, seeing his relationship a bit more. We also have characters who are new parents and I think they're trying to figure out who they are now. And yeah, I thought this was an interesting exploration. Like they don't want to lose their individual identities and just like just become parents. 
And I think it's kind of finding a balance of being a good parent while also like keeping true to who you are. This was a really interesting discussion and I really like seeing this. Like I think we do have a lot of really great action and adventure, but we also have some great like development of the relationships and just team building in this book stuff. I really continue to enjoy the series. Like I don't know if this is necessarily my favorite one, but I had a great time with it. So the other four and a half star book I'll talk about is To Serve With Love by Lauren Lane. So this comes out June 29th and I received this for review from the publisher through NetGalley. So this is an adult romance that's kind of like you've got mail but with this blind dating app. So we follow Gracie who is kind of this reluctant owner of a Manhattan champagne store that's not doing as well as she'd like. We've also got this corporation headed by this handsome man, Sebastian, and they're proposing this buyout. She ends up like turning to Sir, who with whom she is connected on this blind dating app, and she ends up like kind of falling for him without knowing that she's already met him and they hate each other. <laughs> so this was just so adorable. Oh my goodness. It's really fluffy, it's feel good, and it definitely like was a mood brightener. I think it has almost like a fairy tale quality to it and actually has hilarious references throughout with like how much Gracie loves fairy tales and I think she builds things up in her mind to be almost fairy tale like so I just thought this was hilarious that like they kind of acknowledge it within the book that this story does feel almost like a fairy tale. I think it was you know pretty clear what was going to happen here but the actual journey to get there was just fantastic. I found myself smiling and laughing a lot while reading you know I think the writing is very humorous and it's definitely like a bingeable quality to it. I think in terms of the characters Gracie is trying to do what she thinks her father would have wanted with keeping the store and the family and just running it but she hasn't really been able to explore her own dreams and I really just love seeing her figure out exactly what she wants to do with her life and what she's really passionate about. I think she's really sweet and cheerful and earnest and I just really adored her. You know Sebastian on the other hand seems a bit rough but he's also secretly sweet and I think he kind of realizes that his job is a tough one but he seems to genuinely want to help people. The romance is also just like super believable so it's an interesting one to categorize because it's both an enemies to lovers romance and a friends to lovers romance and I think that just all worked really well together. We also have some really fabulous side characters. So we do have Gracie's two siblings and it's nice to see her relationship with them. Her sister is struggling with infertility and it is heartbreaking at times to see her relationship with her husband and just like these issues that come up based on the infertility. We do have you know these great family members and I think there's like Gracie's father's lover who <laughs> is kind of like a pseudo mom for her and she's really awesome so there's a lot of like fabulous family bonds but we also kind of have this like found family of close friends and that was also wonderful. I particularly enjoyed I don't know if it's Kiva, Kiva. She is Gracie's neighbor and she just seems so awesome and funny. I think she's really supportive but also pushes Gracie in ways that are like helpful. I think she just kind of doesn't put up with nonsense so it was just so nice and like oh it was just such a fluffy feel-good romance that I highly recommend. I really loved this and I'm interested in checking out more of this author's work. So now we'll get into a whole bunch of five-star books. And the first one I'll talk about is Burned by Benedict Jacka. So I think this is the seventh book in the Alex Ferris series and this is an adult urban fantasy series. So basically we follow Alex who is this diviner and he can you know see the future and there's an execution order from the Council of Mages on Alex and this also applies to his dependents. So basically it's like how does he save them and himself? I think this was a really exciting plot with him you know kind of being on this run on the run we have this timer ticking with this execution order so there's definitely like some tense moments here. I think there's some really cool ideas here there's like this bubble dimension that turns out to be somewhat creepy and I just oh boy I really enjoyed that part. It's definitely fast paced and engaging throughout the ending is rather chilling and unexpected and I'm like dying to know what happens next. I really liked learning more about the politics of this council and you know we it's a, a lot of like light versus dark mages. I think Alex is trying to just be like an independent mage because he doesn't really want to take sides 
because you know like neither side is really all that great <laughs> so like I understand his desire to be an independent mage but this kind of has some you know questionable results again there's some tense moments here that cause me to fear for Alex and you know his his dependents Luna and Inveri I think they're all in danger and it's this mad scramble to keep everyone safe we do have some betrayals here and I'm really curious what the fallout of these is going to be it's great to see Caldera again. She is a badass lady. She's like a strong earth mage. She's really loyal to her job, even if she doesn't necessarily kind of like want to go against some people. So I think that was just, it was just nice to see her again because I really liked her in previous books. But Alex continues to be just a fabulous main character. You know, he's really clever. I just love seeing how he uses his abilities. Like I said, he's a diviner. And so he kind of can see the future and basically he goes on this like path walking journey to explore different it's like different probabilities of different futures and he can kind of predict the future in that way and I think it's just like a really interesting idea and I like seeing how he uses his abilities to get out of situations and face mages who are much more powerful than he is like you know he's not he doesn't have this brute strength but he's able to use his wits to kind of cleverly avoid situations he definitely wants to protect his people and you know, he's not afraid to respond with a similar level of force, so, you know, I'll do whatever it takes. It's also nice to just see Luna use her powers more, like she has kind of the curse magic abilities, which is really interesting. And then I also just liked seeing Anne as she tries to help, you know, generally I really like both of them, so it was, it was super fun to see them here. So this is a really great urban fantasy series that very much reminds me of the Dresden Files, and I definitely highly recommend it. I can't wait to see what happens next. The next five-star book I'll talk about is The Solstice Countdown by Lisa Sheeran. So I did receive this for review from the author. And this is the seventh book in the SPI file series, which is a urban fantasy series that I really enjoy. And we follow McKenna, who is the seer for this supernatural protection and investigations agency. So that's SPI. And essentially here, she's taking her boyfriend home for the holidays. And they basically have to deal with this dormant source of primordial evil with locals vanishing and you know, the town is cut off, but she also has to deal with a father she's never met before. So this was just so much fun. Oh my god, I love this series, and this is no exception to it. it I'm just so happy to return to this world and our characters, and I continue to love it. I really like that this particular book takes place in North Carolina. There's, like, a lot of fun nods, I think, to, like, things like typical weather patterns, which I, like, I know that may not be exciting for some people, but given that I live here, I think it's just like, oh, like a fun little tidbit that I recognize and like can relate to. So I really enjoy seeing that. The setting of this like town, it's a, it's a cool town that's in this like more mountainy region in North Carolina. Like it seems so cozy, especially because it's, this takes place around the winter solstice. And we also have, you know, the family house that we get to see, and that seems super cool as well. Like, it seems like a really nice house that I would totally live in. <laughs> so, I really liked that. In terms of the plot, I think this was very exciting, and the conclusion in particular was immensely satisfying. It obviously kept me very interested the entire time, definitely wanted to keep reading it. We have some bigger players here that I didn't necessarily expect, kind of like the, uh, the Wild Hunt. That was awesome. And it's just super cool to see what all they do and who all they actually are. I think this series in general has a lot of wit and humor, and we get to see that again here. There's just so many things that make me laugh, and I just absolutely adore it. In terms of the characters, it's super fun to see McKenna's boyfriend meet the family for the first time, and for McKenna to actually meet her father for the first time. I think there's a lot of really sweet moments that show off, you know, how much they care for each other and just how important family is. McKenna continues to be a wonderful main character. I think she is pretty hilarious. I think in this particular book, she's kind of discovering that she's perhaps more capable of things than even she knows. So I just like really can't wait to see what happens next. The chemistry in terms of the relationship is really well done. I totally believe it. And like, I'm here for this relationship. I also really like her boyfriend as a character. He's very powerful and I like seeing how he uses his power to not only protect McKenna and her family but also just generally be useful. <laughs> like it's great to have a powerful mage on your side. I think meeting McKenna's family here was just oh it was super fun. I particularly enjoyed her grandmother. I think she's really spunky and just like a badass older lady who's also pretty hilarious. 
I did miss seeing some, you know, usual characters like Ian and Yasha, but I think it's super fun to have these new characters introduced here. So yeah, I mean, like, I just had a wonderful time with this. I highly recommend this series. I think it's really underrated. Like, I don't think I've heard really anybody else talk about it. And just like, you need to be reading this. It's just a, such a fun, you know, like, there's a lot of investigations. We've got a lot of different supernatural creatures. The next five star book I'll talk about is Injustice Gods Among Us, Year Two, The Complete Collection. And this is written by Tom Taylor. So basically, this is like, a graphic novel series that goes along with the video game. So Superman has kind of gone off the deep end and basically he's trying to remove anything and anyone who is who instigates conflict. Batman is leading the resistance against him and we also have the Green Lantern Corps on their way to investigate this situation and interfere. So this was another great story that's mostly focused on the Green Lanterns, Gotham City, and Sinestro and the Yellow Lantern. So that was really interesting. What I really enjoy about this series is you get to see some heroes fall and make bad choices, but you also have villains doing the right thing. And so it's just like a really interesting exploration of the idea. I think obviously it's definitely brutal. There's lots of death. It's based on a fighting video game. So like, what do you expect? But I'm totally here for it. The ladies feature a bit more here, especially the Black Canaries, but we also have Harley Quinn, Zatanna, Oracle, Batwoman, Huntress. There's a particularly hilarious scene between Dinah and Harley, and I just definitely laughed and I thought that was highly amusing. We get to learn more about the Green Lanterns here. Like, I don't really know that much about them. I'll be honest, they haven't been my, like, go-to superhero, so I don't know. It, it was cool to explore more of the members here, and we also get to learn more about these Guardians. And yeah, like I said, like I don't really know much about it, so that was all new information to me. Superman t continues to just lose it. It's really interesting to see him dramatically change, you know, in terms of the plot in Gotham. We've got people who won't stand idly by when basically, like, Superman sends in these, like, enhanced humans to kind of take control of the city and you know people are like we're not going to stand for this so it's nice to see this resistance. The artwork continues to be really great here. I think it's certainly quick to read. There's lots of action like I said so I really enjoy this. I have the third year as as well. I've heard some like not so great things about years five and six because I think they changed the authors so like I'm not sure what I'm going to do once I get to that point. Like I I kind of want to continue it, but I also, well, I don't know, we'll see. But I, I did just find out that they are releasing like a prequel, like Year Zero collection this summer, so I'm interested in that. So yeah, this was a great graphic novel, and if you're interested in, you know, watching DC characters kind of lose their minds, <laughs> like I would definitely pick this up. The next five-star book I'll talk about is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. And this is actually a YA contemporary, and we follow Eliza, who is this anonymous creator of a popular web comic, Monstrous Sea. And so she's kind of awkward in real life. We also have Wallace, who is a popular fanfic writer for Monstrous Sea, and he ends up transferring to her school, and they bond because he thinks that she's just another fan. Her secret is accidentally shared, and so everything is kind of falling apart. So I like really could not put this down. I started it and finished it in just a few hours. I actually like stayed up a little later than I usually do because I was like, I mean, I just, I just need to see how this ends. I can't stop now. <laughs> so yeah, I just like really wasn't expecting to love this so much, which like perhaps I should have given that like a lot of people I'm friends with here on booktube like really love it. So like I should have known better, <laughs> but like, yeah, I just, I was not prepared for the amount of connection, I guess, with this story that I had. We do have some representation for social anxiety and selective mutism. There's content warnings for suicide and suicidal thoughts as well as bullying. But yeah, I mean, this was just such a great journey. I think the romance and friendships along the way are fabulous. I love how Eliza is really finding out who she is and who she wants to be. Like, you know, I think it's a lot of conflict with her between her online persona as this creator of this, this webcomic versus her <laughs> real life persona. I think this book deals with some tough things like invasion of privacy on the internet and parents like not understanding online friends and how things that like start off as a hobby can turn into so much more. I think this is very relatable, especially now that I am on the internet more being a creator. I don't know if I would have connected with it as much before joining booktube, but now that I'm on booktube, it's like, yeah, okay, I can definitely understand this. We also get some like hints of this comic Monstrous Sea in here, and this is like totally something that I would read. 
I, and so like, I guess on that note, we do have some mixed media elements with these comic parts, as well as some like fan fiction and, you know, like internet dis discussions. Again, those are realistic and relatable. I love the general message that internet friends are real friends. You know, I think the internet can be a really great place to meet people and bond over shared interests. Like I've certainly done that. I've made a lot of really great friends here on booktube. So I, I just really liked that aspect here. There are some relatable struggles to high school and just kind of figuring out what you want to do with your life. There's some like passages and like paragraphs and stuff on like doubt and doubting yourself. And I was like, oh my God, I feel so seen right now. Like that is totally me. It definitely made me cry. I think there's some really powerful emotional moments here with bonds with family and friends. Eliza is great to follow. I think her anxiety and doubt are understandable, though, like, for me, like, I definitely was not, like, as socially anxious as she is, particularly in high school. Like, I didn't have her same experience, but I think just generally a lot of the stuff that she goes through is understandable. I think it's interesting to see her reactions with what she wants to do versus, I think, what she thinks people expect from her. And again, like, I really liked these relationships. I definitely believe in these bonds. So yeah, this was just was such a great story. And I'm, I'm definitely interested in finding more books like this. I think for me, like, I don't read that much YA contemporary, but the ones that I've chosen tend to have some sort of social media element or deal with, like, fandom, you know, whether it's, like, video gaming or, like, these, these web comics or whatever. I think that's what really works well for me. So like if anybody has suggestions on books kind of similar to this, like please let me know because I would totally read that. The last five star book I'll talk about today is The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. So this is the second book in the Lady Astronaut series. So it's the sequel to The Calculating Stars, which I read last year and really loved. So this is an adult sci-fi slash alternate history. And in this particular novel, we follow the lady astronaut who has been working on rotation on the moon. And sh there's this like first exploratory mission to Mars that's being planned. And they essentially like need to send a human computer on board. So she ends up going. So this was just another fantastic installment. It does have a different feel, I think, to the first one because it's mostly in space, but it's a very exciting change of pace and scenery. The space travel <laughs> certainly provides some interesting, like very exciting tra and tragic moments. There, things don't always go well. I think it's not an easy journey here and they do have to troubleshoot and like figure things out along the way. <laughs> there's again some really tense moments but there's also some chill ones where she's like baking and doing things like that. Several of our characters do have to deal with grief and there are some really heartbreaking moments here. Elma, who is this lady astronaut, does seem a bit more self-assured here than she did in the first book though she does, does still struggle with anxiety. I think she has some tough decisions here with what she wants in her life and trying to just generally balance family with her own you know aspirations i continue to love just how good she is at math and how she does things like recite the digits of pi to relax and i just like find her so relatable and i just love her this book obviously deals again with racism and sexism of this time period obviously it is an alternate history book but there's still a lot of like the same issues that come up in this particular alternate history you know, I think Elma does want to help, but she doesn't always know the best way to do so. And so I think her interactions with characters of color on this spaceship do kind of help her figure out like what is and isn't her place to do or say. We do have some LGBTQ plus representation here, so that was great to see. In general, I think this feels really realistic in terms of the scientific aspects. And oh my god, it was just so good. I just loved every minute of it, and I can't wait to continue next. I think what I remember hearing is like the first two books are sort of like a duology, and then I think the next book is The, Rel the Relentless Moon. And I mean, it's definitely like still in this same time period. I don't know if we're following Elma in that, so I'm curious to find that out. But like, highly recommend this series, and I just like I can't wait to see what happens next. So those are all the books that I have finished since last week. Definitely a larger wrap up, you know, but uh, such is life. Let's see here. I, I did read The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. I haven't written a review for that, so I'll just kind of be in my next weekly update. But I'm currently reading Wild Signs by Patricia Briggs, which is the latest Alpha and Omega novel. This is an adult urban fantasy series about werewolves, and, you know, I'm 40 pages into it. Really loving it so far. I'm not surprised because I love Patricia Briggs' writing. 
Aside from this, you know, in terms of what I'm going to do next, I don't actually know. There's certainly like a few books that came out last month that I really want to get to, like Good Girl, Bad Blood. So I'll probably perhaps jump into those next, but we shall see. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. For your question of the day, have you watched the Old Guard movie on Netflix? So I do have a Discord channel, and if you want to join that, the link is in the description below. I hope you're all having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.